Hey everybody, this is Paul from Les Bons Guitars and welcome to my shop. Now this is part four of my series on how to build a set neck guitar. And this particular video right here is mainly going to be, well, it's going to start out as uh, a fretting video. So we're going to do some fretting on this fingerboard in question. After it's fretted, we'll do some leveling and some uh, cleanup and polishing and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll start taking some uh, material off the back of this neck and start shaping the contour of the back of it. If I have time in this video, I'll go ahead and start looking at uh, the body part of it, of this guitar. So this has been sanded down. After it's been radius, it's been sanded down. And I've gone up to some 800 grit with this Super Acelex, uh sandpaper made by Kovax. Look into it. This is some good stuff, especially when you're finishing, when you're leading up to finish, I say, when you're doing your fine sanding just before your buffing stages, this stuff is great. But they go lower in grits. I think they go down to 400. Uh, let me get a box to show you what it looks like. There's some, uh, here's some 1,000 right here. I think I've talked about this in one of my buffing videos. But uh, look into that stuff. It's really great stuff. And you don't use a whole lot of it. It lasts a long time, too. Anyways, I got that nice and shiny. I went up to 800 with it. And now I'm going to uh, break the angle, uh, break the edges of these fret slots on both sides of it. So that when the fret fits in there, it can fit all the way down flush. Because, you know, fret wire is not perfect. There can be a little bit of a... Uh, uh, some metal, a little bit of roundness between the tang and the uh, the top of the, um, the 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 top of the fret itself, the wire itself. So this helped it go down flatter. So I'm going to go ahead and just use this triangle file, and it's not much. You just hit it a few times. I even go over into the uh, the wood binding a little bit. Doesn't matter. It, uh, it won't be seen and it's not much that you're doing here. You're just breaking it a little bit. And once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and start sizing up some frets and I'm going to put them in a little holder. I don't, I didn't get my holder out yet, but I'll show you this holder. I put them. It's just, it's just a piece of wood with holes in it enough to hold probably 24 frets. I think I might go higher. I don't know why I would, but um but yeah we just break these little edges right here and we'll go on to the next process here's the fret wire i'm using this is actually uh got this stuff i get from stumac some of the stuff i get from lmi lmii i think the word they call it's a um uh, wide wide hide fret wire nickel silver i've made this jig you've seen these around some people have a handle on the back of it kind of crank it i don't i just made this and i got little marks i put on it for different radiuses and i just push it through like this and it comes out great i run it through one way flip around run it back through the other way a couple times and it just comes out right. So it's going to match that radius. And then need. Okay. Got a pair of nippers. And we've also got a pair of snip. I don't know what you call these. These are tang, tang cutters. You put the uh, fret inside here, and you cut the tang off of it. Pretty neat. So what I'm going to do first is, after rounding these out, I'll find out what I need for length on each fret. And I go kind of close, try to save the, as much wire as I can. Um, so you don't have so much to nip off all the time. Just kind of get a size that works and stick it in this little holder just go all the way down 
until I get all the fret wire I need for this project. Now I've got them loaded up. I'll cut the size from one to 22. And uh, I didn't mention too, I also, I wiped them down with naphtha. It gets all the junk off them from the manufacturing process. And then I'm gonna start nipping them. So I'll take them, I'll size them up again, where they go. And I'll find the spot where I need to nip it, where it works the best. Let me turn it this way. Nip it right up to about there. Nope, oh, I'm stuck. There we go. Didn't quite take it off cleanly in that one. Well, anyways, what I do later on, anyways, I take a file to these and I file these little ends down and I make it so it's uh, smooth. And I like to go pretty precise with these. Let me turn it this way. Just want to nip a little bit more off. So don't run into any interference with the binding. So it look like that. I'll do all of those and then I'll clean these up. You'll see that later. I'll clean those up and then when I end up by pressing them in, I, I put super glue in here. You can do super glue or uh, athletic glue, like um, tight bond or something like that, whatever you prefer. I've done both. I like super glue better. And I'll show you my drill press in a minute, but let me get the rest of these nipped off and then I'll show you some cleaning up. And we'll press on. Looks good. Next step. All right, I'm sorry about the audio. I'm having a problem with the uh, the Bluetooth portion of it. So I cut that off. I went to the boom mic. There's also some airplanes flying around here today, so apologize for all that noise. Anyway, uh, continue on. I got a few more of these to uh, take care of, and um, end up putting a block down. I, I took a drill bit and I made a little uh, half circle right here, just so the fret can fit in there and it can kind of stay in place. Still do it on a table, and it just keeps it lined up for me to just file off that end right there, nice and flat. We have a nice snug fit all right guys so I've already started fretting this fingerboard uh, I thought I hit the on button for the, the video but I hit the hit a photo button instead anyway got a nice picture so I'm gonna continue on with this but what I have here is I'm fretting these I'm fretting this fingerboard using this um, this is an old drill press that I had. It's a uh, stand mounted type. The electrical went out on it. So instead of throwing it away, I repurposed it as an arbor. So I put the, uh, the fret piece on here, the fretting tool, and I've got the appropriate size radius call in there. And this is how I fret them, just with this. Works great. It's like any other arbor, uh, except it's an old drill press. So what I'm doing is I cleaned out these slots with a, with a uh, X-Acto knife just to make sure there's no dust and stuff inside of them. I'll clean them out like this here, get anything out of there. And then I take some wax. I'm just using this Johnson wax. It doesn't matter, it's just some paste wax. I've had this for a long time. It's not even half empty yet. And I've already put some on these, but I'll put another layer here right across both sides of the fret slot. And that's going to keep the super glue from sticking. Now I'll take my super glue and I'll run a bead inside this fret slot. And it's going to do two things. It's going to fill it to any voids down inside. And it's also going to grab onto the fret wire as an extra bit of security. Now these frets actually were a little bit oversized, which you really want for 
this type of fret works. It's, it's a little bit rounder. Um, but I put them in here. And then I'll give it a little tap with my mallet on the ends here. Alright, so this glue's been drying for about two hours. Just let it sit. It had other things to do. But now I'm going to clip all these little nubs off of here. All the way down this fingerboard. Get rid of all this extra ends here. <clears throat> and I'm going to use these little nippers. And they're flush. Right here, they cut real close to the fingerboard. So it gives a nice uh, close cut. And I try not to let the little metal pieces fly around the shop too much. Shop back really doesn't pick them up. If it does, it's, it's really not good for it. Oh, sometimes they get away from me though. I'll sweep up and find them. flush cut it's time to clean his edges up so this is something I got from Stumac this file is uh, it's made for actually for for the uh, fretwork on top but I use it on the side here That's pretty short work of nickel silver. It won't mar up the side of the board. It'll just attack the uh, some metal fret ends. They're pretty sharp, so you gotta be careful. I've always done them this way here. This is a uh, fret end camphor. I made that. I had an old uh, file that I broke and I put inside this block. Put that angle on it. I forget what the angle is. But uh, that works good for making my uh, angles. <clears throat> All right, let's do this here. This is going to put a very nice flat, even angle on all the frets. Make sure it clears. You don't hit this headstock to make the chip in it. Hopefully you can see that. So they have very nice even angles. Now I'm going to work the, uh, the edges and to get that burr off the side of it. I've got this little file right here. It's got like a safety edge. Take that and just roll these edges. Alright, I'll do the other side and we'll come back and we'll do some leveling. Okay, with a bright light, B2 
behind me there, actually in front of me, but behind this straight edge, it's a notch straight edge, and I'm gonna put it on the wood. I'm measuring, I'm checking the wood to see how flat this fingerboard is, and it's, it is dead flat. Perfect. Okay, turn that light off. I don't need that anymore. And then, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and take the Sharpie, and I got it in this holder just to keep it, uh, keep it steady. I'm going to mark all the tops of these frets with this black Sharpie. Now, <clears throat> I have this straight edge. This straight edge has uh, 120 paper on it on one side and 220 other. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's ground really flat. I'm not going to say it's uh, precision because I didn't have it done in the precision place, but it's, it's pretty flat. And it's kind of heavy, so I don't have to really put a lot of pressure on it. So I just kind of lay it on top of the neck and I run it across. And it's just the weight of this thing. And then I'll take a look at it, see where it's taking the meat off. It's starting to do it pretty evenly. There's a few spots. And I'm not going, okay, I'm going straight, conical, like this. Is that conical, is that right? No, cylindrical. Cylindrical, straight. Conical would be going in towards the center, kind of going in, in this direction here. And that's the way you would kind of do a, a frets that are, um, that have like a uh, compound radius. But I'm going straight across like this. So I'm coming off the front end of the, the, the first fret area of the fingerboard when I come up to these ends here. If that makes sense to you, hopefully it does. the other side and I'll take a look at it so it's looking pretty good as a few it's not hitting every spot but they're pretty darn level I'm just gonna go with the 220 side the rest of the way just so it doesn't take too much more off and I follow the curvature of the radius Now I'm actually going to mark it again. I'm only going to hit it with the 220 side. I marked all the tops of the frets with the sharpie right here. Got a couple spots that need a little more. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and crown them since I leveled them. And they're all even with each other. Some of the tops are a little bit flatter than the others. <clears throat> so I'm going to get them all uniform and nice and rounded, which is called the crown. And I'm going to do that with some really basic, simple tools. Now you can buy some things at Stumac or L uh, LMII, places like that. Some of the files they use are pretty expensive. And they're nice. I like to have one, but uh, instead of spending that big money on it, I make something. I know someone out there is going to say, oh, you can just buy one of those, but why buy it if you can use something else that works just as good, that I think, anyways. And I just use these sanding sticks right here. I got these rubber erasers. I did buy these from Stumac. Sometimes I do use these, 
Uh, but the problem is I, I can't really get in there the way I want to because I got to hold on to this piece here and I got to work it around. I mean, it's okay for the, for the up, these footies. First frets, you get stuck in down here. I got to change over. This is a, these are guards, by the way. I'm going to use these guards to cover the, the fingerboard to protect it from the sandpaper and stuff. And uh, you know, run it like this here. But anyways, I'm gonna start with number one, work my way down. I use these fret guards, fretboard guards. I may use these. I really just like using the sticks. These have have a 120 sandpaper on them, and I just kind of run them along this thing on an angle, and I work my way around. I go in this one, I work my way around till I leave just a very little thin line of the black sharpie on the top of the fret that lets me know that I've got the uh, radius, the roundness of the the frets, the crowning, and all that's left is a very little tip that's untouched, and that'll get hit later with another process. But I don't want to touch any of the tops of these frets because they all are level with each other, and that's going to keep it uh, from buzzing. So I got a thin little line on that one, a thin little line on that one. I'm just going to work my way down with this stick and just. Just take off that little edge from the flat part of the top of the fret is, kind of round that little corner off, and it's all going to come together. So, anyway, this is the this is my process. Now I just follow the radius. So I'm going in this motion here around the radius, and as I'm I'm working over a little bit more flatter. I'm getting more of that line out. So I'm taking away that, that corner, that flat part of the fret. So I'm moving faster because they're not as flat. So I'm gonna take a little bit more because they got flattened out more. So I'm waiting until I see just a, a little sliver of this uh, Sharpie the very top of course you can't see from where you're at it's kind of hard to see in the video anyways I can tell I gotta sand change the sandpaper out this is one I used from the last job so I'm gonna go ahead and get through this change the sandpaper I'll get through this to the end and we'll start talking about what's next. This is my last fret. <clears throat> so all of them have just a little thin line on top, top of the crown from the Sharpie. So they've all been rounded out. Oop. There we go. Not too bad. So now, let's see, I got a piece of 320 sandpaper. I'm gonna take this and just kind of run it over the top of these frets. Just gonna smooth things out a little bit. Let's see if I can get this right. Already shining up. You know, that's pretty good. All I need is some buffing. All right, so now I'm gonna clean up the fingerboard. All right, you know, I'm gonna leave right here for now. Let's go on to uh, work in the back. We go ahead and uh, do the contour. I'm gonna leave it like this. Not, everything's clean, there's no, it's very smooth on your fingers, no snacking, snagging. I mean, I can hit it with some steel wool even. 
I will fully buff these out later on after I get the neck uh, closer to finished because I'm still gonna be messing with it and I may scuff them up a little bit while I'm messing around with it. But really that's it for the, uh, other than buffing out. <sighs> Those look pretty good. Let's go on to the next step. Okay, now I'm gonna work on the profile. I'm gonna take a lot of meat off of this thing all the way down to this line right here. I don't know if you can see that. That's a line I drew right across here. That's about a, a little bit less than a 16th of an inch above my final thickness that I'm gonna have it. And that's measured from the first fret and the 12th fret, which is around here somewhere. And uh, that's, that's, how, that's the lowest I wanna go. The rest I'll work by hand. But uh, this takes a lot of the work out of, of the carving part of it. I stop at this line that I put over here because right over here is where I'm gonna start the volute part here. I'm gonna stop that line there. That's where I'm gonna start the curve of the heel. So this takes a lot of uh, a lot of time out of it, just cuts it down. This is a safety planer, and it just goes across this thing and just shaves it down for me. So it's pretty simple. I've got this jig that I made. It kind of elevates the front a little bit. It gets me level. You know, because this neck is, is is tapering this way a little bit, and uh, keeps it keeps that taper that I need. I got a, a wedge on the other side here, and it's just kind of pushing up on it. Cut all the way down to my line. I could very well take this on the bandsaw and cut most of that out. My heel area and the volute area. What I do here with this, today I just did it without doing that. Just with the safety planer. I just made a little step downs. I just moved a little more this way as I went down a few times in this way. Until I was able to clear that ledge on the safety planer right there. Because it would hit the wood. Anyway, you can cut that out with bandsaw first and do this. It'd be fat, a little bit faster, but this is fine. It works out great. Anyway, next step is to uh, cut these, uh, or I should say sand these out, this, this, this area right here for the, the heel and this area right here for the volute. Okay guys, well this video is getting a little long-winded and you know specifically because of the fretting. The fret work takes a while, it's very intricate, and I had to keep chopping and chopping and chopping some stuff. Just wanted you to be able to get the gist of what I was doing, but I think fretting is better served as its own video. So I'll probably do that another time. So we'll leave it at this for now. So in the next video we'll carve this uh, contour 
and we'll start on the body of this guitar. I've got a lot of other stuff coming up as well. I've got some new tools. I've got some tools that I bought. I've got some tools that I'm making. And I want to show you what I'm doing with those, how it's going to help improve the process of building guitars here at Les Bronze Guitars. And I've got a couple of video requests out there. Uh, some people ask me if I've done certain types of videos. Uh, I haven't, so I'm going to go ahead and make some uh, of those. They're good ideas, so I'll, I got some ideas for some more videos as well. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And make sure you keep up with me on my next video, which is coming up soon. Part 5 of the How to Build a Setneck Guitar Series. I'll see you next time.